I think it is appropriate for me to admonish both the House Managers and the President's Council in equal terms to remember that they are addressing the world's greatest deliberative body, Robert said. One reason it has earned the title is because its members avoid speaking in a manner and using language that is not conducive to civil discourse. For Roberts, I had just listened to the impeachment managers and Trump's legal team rip into each other after House Judiciary Chairman Jerry Nadler made the case for issuing a subpoena for former National Security Advisor John Dalton's testimony. During that argument, Nadler accused Republican senators of voting for a cover-up by killing amendments for documents and testimony of additional witnesses. So far, I'm sad to say, I see a lot of senators voting for a cover-up. Voting to deny witnesses and obviously a treacherous vote, Nadler said. A vote against an honest consideration of the evidence against the president. A vote against an honest trial. A vote against the United States. That led to White House counsel Pat Cipollone firing back during his own remarks, the only one who should be embarrassed, Mr. Nadler, is you. For the way you address this body. This is the United States Senate. You're not in charge here. Roberts said the kind of exchange was not appropriate and, providing a historical example, reminded the legal teams that they need to be on their best behavior. In the 1905 Swain trial, a senator objected when one of the managers used the word petifogging and the presiding officer said the word ought not to have been used, Roberts said. I don't think we need to aspire to that high of a standard, but I do think those addressing the Senate should remember where they are. Throughout Tuesday's trial, Senate Republicans defeated a series of amendments from Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer to subpoena the Trump administration for Ukraine documents as well as testimony from key administration officials. The Senate ultimately killed those amendments and approved rules for the trial on a party-line vote without addressing whether the chamber should subpoena documents or witnesses. In his role as Chief Justice, Roberts presides over the trial, his constitutional duty, in a role that is highly public but unlikely to see him cast any votes. His chiding of the legal teams Wednesday morning marked a break from his largely procedural tasks throughout the trial so far, including reciting procedural rules, keeping the clock and reading aloud vote tallies. Still, heading into the Senate trial, Roberts likely anticipated all manner of possible disruption by senators, the House managers and perhaps even Trump, with whom he has tangled in the past. The Chief Justice has long been known for his extensive preparation and an ability to foresee what's ahead that some colleagues have likened to three-dimensional chess. CNN's Joan Biskupic contributed to this report.